guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, thank you for looking at this and subscribing if you did. Um, I haven't posted a video in quite a while, and I've said that in a lot of my recent videos, and I apologize, but you know, when you're not tied down to a limitation, you kind of go off the end and just do whatever you want. But I'm going to try my hardest to keep on a good track, but we shall see. Okay, so this week's video is really awesome. Um, I made this out of random, and I thought it was really fun, and I wanted to share it with you guys. Basically, I made a movie film strip, and I did, like, twisting and twisting and curling at the end of it, and it made this really awesome effect, and I really thought you'd enjoy seeing it in a video form, so let's get started. Alright, so we're going to open a blank canvas. I'm choosing white for my background. It works best. So, do that. Um, any size you like is cool. Uh, I don't have a preference. So, we're going to go down here with our shape tool. And, you guessed it, we're going to be picking out the movie film strip uh, shape. Um, you will find that somewhere up here. Where is it? Here it is. That's right here. Um, 35 millimeter film strip. Um, and, we're going to be using a lot of these. Um, I'm only doing five. But you guys could totally do as more, many as you want. You'll probably have to just resize them. So we're going to go ahead and make one. Uh, I'm going to go with maybe that's a good size. Sure, we'll go with that. Um, in my final outcome, guys, you'll notice how I've added an extra effect to it. Um, I won't be showing you that in this video because I just don't know if it's really necessary. It wasn't my actual intention for the actual effect, but I just did it because I felt like it need for that particular photo it needed it. But... Yeah. Alright, so we're going to start with the first one. Um, we're going to do them each individually. However, what you want to do immediately, though, is you want to duplicate this um, for as many photos as you're going to be doing. That way they're all the same size and you're not playing with the shape tool all over again. So, Command J, one, two, three, four, because I have five photos I'm using. We're going to hide the first four and just worry about the first one we're working with. Okay. So my shape layer one, um, I'm going to place that where I want to have everything going, and I'm going to go right here in the dead middle. Okay, so let's grab our first photo. I'm using this one here. Obviously, it's going to probably be humongous, so we're going to resize that. Um, and again, you can always resize anyways when you go into your original document. So underneath that, we're going to place our photo. And, like I've said, I'm going to resize, because it's very big. Um, Alright, let's see, where do I want to place that? So, we're going to place it like that. Okay, so, now I'm going to have to do some editing, because I don't want to have any of the photo inside these little, like, um, squared things here. And if I did the whole, um that little masky thing, it would mask it in there for sure. I don't want that. So we're just going to go ahead and get rid of that immediately because we just want the photo inside that part. So get rid of that. You don't need it. It's not necessary. And anything that's left over on the edges, you can get rid of that too. That's not necessary neither. Now you could technically just resize this and have it fitting in the dead center, but I like to have a little bit of an extra whatever, so. Yeah! Alright, we're cooking with something here. Oops. Don't want to do that. Okay, first one is completed. That is our first our first ticket tape. Just make sure I got everything out of there. Yes, I did. Okay. So then we're going to take that layer with the photo plus the shape layer. Using the command key, you can command key or control key, depending on your operating system. You can click on both, make them both active like that, and do a command or control E to merge those into one. That way, your first ticket tape is now one piece. Okay. Now, we're going to be doing the curling and all the warping towards once everything is together. Um, the first and the last um, ticket or the uh, film strip are not going to be connected together as one. 
because those are going to have the twisting and the action, and that's where the, the most twisted action, and that's not going to really work out well if it's not, if it's all together. So we're going to just do those separately. All right, let's make our next shape layer active. Let's move, oops, that's not the same layer. Let's move that one down below here. All right. Now, if you do happen to find that your canvas is slightly too big or too small, you can resize to suit the needs of yourself. All right, I'm going to now take just a small section of this, actually. I'm not going to take the entire thing because that would be weird and it wouldn't work out in my favor. So, I delete, delete, delete. And again, we're going to place that underneath. Wow, that's still pretty damn huge. Can't believe it. But, okay, sure. Let's see, I think with this one... Will I do the same thing? Probably not. Uh, Alright, so grab my eraser tool. Oops, that's a bit much of my erasing. Actually, you know what? Who cares? Okay. My eraser tool again, and erase the tippity top. Perfect. Okay, that's that one there. So again, I'm going to control click and make those together. And you kind of get the gist of what I'm going at and what I'm doing, so Continue that for your next, um, as many as you have. I'm going to probably speed this up for you guys, just in the watching sense. Okay, so we're on our last one, so I'm going to now start the process of showing you guys where we're going to go with this and all that jazz. So, yeah, it gets interestingly fun. Um, <laughs> I will tell you that. Oops, don't want to erase that much. Okay. All right. So let's zoom back out. So I have three photos connected together. Um, these three here, and they are going to be one section. And then we're going to have these two that are not a section. So that's where that ends right there. Okay, so we're going to put the first two, we're going to connect the two ends together, but they're just going to be separate layers. That's the only difference. So let's move those closer. So they blend in. Nice, nice, nice. All right. Let's move this one over. All right. So now let's start warping and doing some crazy cool stuff. So I'm going to hide these for now because we're going to start with the middle part. And you might want to zoom in just for this part so you can get it correctly, or the way you like it, I should say. So hit warp. And essentially what you're doing is you're just creating like a page. You're kind of, you're just warping it in a way that looks neat to you guys. Um, you may have to go and redo a few times to get it correct or to the way you think it would look cool. Um, come on. Okay, that looks kind of cool actually, sort of. So now we're going to put the two ends together. And we're going to start with the top one since it's the one I just opened up completely. That was my intention. And this one's going to be warped as well. So we're going to... How do we do this? Let's see. Warp. 
so I'm gonna warp it to that. Disconnected over here. Ooh, look at that. Looks like it could be torn, a piece torn off. That's actually a really cool effect. That's kind of similar to what I already did in my um, other, um, my other one. So that's actually really cool. Okay, so that's that part. Let's do the other one, the very last one. Um, let's put this one. Over here. What if you also that you actually look good? Um. Hmm. What do I want to work you? Okay. I think that's pretty cool, actually. I think I'm going to put you down below. There we go. Oh, that looks really cool, guys. Look at that. It's a cool little warp ticketing tape. Uh, however, I think the top one, I think I'm going to actually twist it a bit more. Just a wee bit more. Hmm. Okay. Wow, that's really, really intense. Okay, so now at this point, what you can do, um, if you need to enhance your photos with color or brighten them a bit, which some photos might need to be brightened, what I did in my other previous uh, example I used the dodge tool and then just brushed over what needed to be brushed over to brighten it up and show it, case it more. And you could do the very same with the burn tool if it's too bright. Do that, but otherwise do that and it adds contrast and sticks them out. Okay, so once they're all where you want them, we're going to now use the lovely drop shadow tool. Now this is going to be a little, bit a little bit difficult to do. Because if you want it to stand out, it has to have a drop shadow. It's just this is the way it looks good. Um, I played around and the only way I could physically make this effect look really cool is if I had a drop shadow. So we're going to do layer style, add a drop shadow. Um, the only problem with the drop shadow is it does cover the holes. So that's kind of a little bit lame. So what I had to do is alter the opacity slightly. Um, that way it didn't really stand out too, too much. And it wasn't too overbearing. Um, I made the size 10. And I think I changed my spread. No, I didn't. It was the size. Okay, yeah. And then my size, I chose, I choose 10, yeah, I chose 10. So 10 for your distance and 10 for your size. And 50% for your opacity and the rest can stay the same. And I'm going to probably just do copy layer style for both and make sure it looks good for the same, the other two. Um, let's see, does it look good for that one? Oh, yes it does. I did try doing the brush tool, making a shadow, but it just wasn't working out in the way I wanted it to, so I had to go with the, um, I just, I had to go with the, uh, drop shadow. And for some reason, there is a piece there that wasn't meant to be there. Okay. So, essentially, that's the effect that we were going for. Um... 
it's a peeled effect. Now, as you'll notice on the peel parts here, those could have used more of a shadow. I tried my best in my um, example to do more shadowing, but I just didn't, it just didn't look right to me. But then again, I don't know if I tried the right brush size or what the deal was. It's just I couldn't get the whole look to look good. So I left it at this and it was fine. So this is essentially all that I was going for. Um, I did add other effects um, that you'll see in my final outcome. Um, but you guys don't have to do that. It was just I personally wanted to. Um, so I'll show you this one as a final outcome. And I'll also show you another one I made a few days prior. Um, so thanks for watching this video. Do subscribe to my channel. I will be posting more tutorials in the future. Not as frequently as I used to when I was tied down to a limitation of how many I had to post, but I will be posting at least once or twice a month now. Um, I used to post every week, but it's just getting so much. So, sorry guys, I will be cutting back slightly. But I will be posting videos. I won't leave you guys, you know, for a year like some YouTubers do. I'll still be here. Any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. I'm on social media. All links are below as well. And thank you guys again for watching, and please do subscribe. I love new subscribers. All right, later, guys.